This week's teardown is an engine that you'll never find on my shelves. You'll never see me trying to sell one or advertise one. You'll never see me offer any kind of warranty with one of these engines because I don't really want my name associated with one unless, of course, I'm tearing one down. This is a BMW Mini Cooper N14 B16 out of a 2010 Mini Cooper S. It's 172 horsepower, turbocharged, all aluminum four-cylinder. And on paper, that sounds great. They, they do run really well and they make great power. I know they tune really well, which is great, but that's not how I judge how good an engine is. I judge how good an engine is on several factors, but the, the primary reason I say an engine is good or bad, besides it's my opinion, is how do they treat owners when they have average maintenance? Are they reliable or is average maintenance subpar and they will fall apart if you follow the recommended oil changes? And well, these engines have some issues. It seems every time I post a video on an engine that I may not care for, and I point out its commonly known flaws that could be easily backed up with a five minute Google search, there's a few people that leave comments saying that they've put 130,000 miles on theirs and they've only had to change the oil. And I'm not here to tell you that if you own one of these engines, it's gonna blow up tomorrow, or that you shouldn't buy one of these cars with one of these engines. I'm merely stating that if you follow the factory oil change intervals, if you follow the factory maintenance intervals, and it's now 10 or 15 years old, it may be towards the end of its lifespan. And that seems to be what I see in the real world as far as demand and supply. If you look on carpart.com, which is a, a listing for all salvage yards that are on Carpart, you can look up these engines and you'll see that there's a lot of these engines that are bad, core, could not start, low compression, locked up, parts only, and then the engines that are good are $3,500 or more, which tells me that when the engine is worth close to what the car is, maybe it's a, a, a hot, high ticket item. Maybe a lot of people need these engines and maybe there's not a lot of supply. Now these engines suffer from normal BMW things. The timing guides fall apart. They have high pressure fuel pump problems, they have turbocharger problems, the intakes get carboned up because they are direct injected and not port injected. And well, it's a small car, it's an economy car if you look at it that way. And a lot of people just do the bare minimum and these are not really bare minimum engines. Unfortunately, I don't have any really good details on this engine because it, it was a core return at another yard. So there's no VIN number or anything that I can look up miles but it was stored inside, which is really important. So now let's see if it turns over. It still has spark plugs in it. It should have compression and it turns over. Ooh, that was compression. I mean, it turns over okay. Okay, well, that's a good sign. Now, before we go yanking this thing apart, I did want to note one thing and that is it seems to be leaking some sort of fluid on the floor and it, it's kind of a mixture of oil and water and it's coming from the oil pan and I don't see any obvious damage. That is not a crack. So why is that happening? And something else I really don't like about these engines, this is the location of the oil filter. And now you have charge pipe, intake pipe, oil filter. It's in like the least accessible place. It's a wonder people don't change their oil on time. First thing we're going to do, pull the spark plugs. Well, I don't see any bent straps or smashed electrodes. Nothing that leads me to think that there's some sort of malice in the combustion palace, but check out the gap on these things. That's uh way overdue for plugs and that one yikes the next thing we're going to do is focus on the turbo charger we're trying to get this turbo and exhaust manifold off all right we're going to take a break from that because this thing is leaking pretty bad and we're going to drain whatever is in the crankcase because I'm not convinced it's oil. Hmm. 
That's not oil. It's not gasoline. I don't know what that is. Besides water. And lots of it. Ah, there's some oil in there. It, it, it was in a building, I promise. I, I got this out of a building. It doesn't even look like it was sitting outside, but... How else would this get in there? While we're here, and this thing is still draining water out of the oil pan, let's go ahead and remove the oil filter. Well, let's see what we can find in here. Well, I don't really see any bits of metal. It's kind of sludgy in here, though. Uh, maybe a couple, couple pieces of forbidden glitter. It's just, it's just not that bad looking. Next, we'll unbolt the oil drain. And now the oil feed. Bracket that holds this coolant hosed. Coolant fitting. What the? What the? What? Were you just? That was unnecessary. Now we can start unbolting the exhaust manifold. Once we get the right size socket. I gotta get the oil drain fitting out of the way. Here we go. Now that this is kind of out of the way. I can get to that bolt and probably this bolt. Which leaves us with one that would normally be easy, but there's a stud for the uh, downpipe. It's in the way. This might work. <laughs> uh, nope, quarter drive may just not be enough. Let's try it with a slightly bigger ratchet. Yeah. Excellent. Now, aside from the fact that everything is still in the way, this turbo should come right off, I think. Oh, there's vacuum lines I forgot about and a connector. And of course, they are fighting me. Vacuum line off. And we're free. Now let's check out this turbo. Well, the impeller looks good, but it is locked up. Now, why would it be locked up? Oh. Um, well, I'm going to try to bring you in here and I'll show you. It doesn't look good in there. That's the oil drain. That's not good. The rest of the turbo doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of play here. It's not terrible, but with it being locked up, I'm just going to assume this isn't really going to have any value. Next, we'll start on the intake manifold. I could really do without the type of connectors this has. And there's so many of them. Ah, intake off. It's got a strange plastic throttle body, but that's nothing new. Well, this isn't really that bad for one of these. These usually look much worse than this. I don't see any metal. I don't see anything bent. So far, just normal stuff, except for a crankcase full of water. Now we need to take the wiring harness off of the valve cover. Oh, 
All right, now we are just about ready to pull the valve cover. This will be our first real look inside this engine. Ah, the crankcase line can come off with it. Ah, didn't even need to pry it. Oh my, oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's you. Well, aside from the fact that this is really varnished and this probably followed factory maintenance intervals or worse, there is a ton of water in here. It's almost like we drained two gallons of water out of the crankcase. And some of it doesn't look too good. It's not like just water and then oil. It's water and oil. Oil. I don't see any valve train failures. I don't see any damage to camshafts. But it is not looking good in here. Surprisingly, timing guide appears to be in pretty good shape. I don't really see any chunks missing. We won't really know until we get it all out, but I don't see a timing related failure yet. Now I'm going to work on trying to get some of this harness removed from the engine so that uh, we can get this fuel pump off. Okay, we're just going to let it lie like that so that we can get this fuel pump off. Now the fuel pump. Well that, that's pretty gnarly looking. While we're on the south end of this engine, let's go ahead and get this vacuum pump removed. One vacuum pump, and now we'll continue removing connectors. Ooh, we have the harness loose, totally? Almost, we have one connector, and we're off. Next, I'm going to remove the thermostat housing, but I wanted to show you guys where they put the air bleeder screw. It's right underneath this engine hanger bracket. Oh, there's still lots of coolant in there, but it's off. Next on the chop of block, we have the belt tensioner and the water pump. Now, if you look at the water pump, the pulley has like a, a liner around it. I don't know if I'll be able to get this off. Yeah. So yeah, it's got like a, it looks like a belt wrapped all the way around the pulley. And I'm sure that never has any problems ever and then this super reliable contraption that never goes bad ever unless you drive your car this is the belt tensioner now normally I would you know yeet this across the shop or something but I'm not going to do that because I know people with I know, I know one person with one of these cars and I'm just going to give it to him to keep it in his trunk so that when it does break, he has something to get himself off the side of the road without a tow. And now, the water pump. So the water pump actually doesn't look too bad. Now, this thing is all plastic except for the shaft and the flange. I'm sure these never have problems though, so it's really not a worry. Impeller looks good, it spins nice, it doesn't look like it's been leaking out of the weep hole. This would make the perfect spare for someone to keep in their trunk, just in case. We'll just keep it in this trunk here, just right, right, right there. There, it fits perfect, just perfect. While we're here, we'll get this bracket off. Next, we're gonna remove this, which is a vacuum storage container. Next, we need to take the tension out of the timing system, so we'll get the tensioner loosened up first. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, nope, that's not good. Before I show you what I found when I pulled the tensioner out, let's get this out too. You know, everything was going just fine until I pulled these out. It's a lot of metal and a lot of gunk on that vano solenoid. Next, there's a plug to take out. Okay, apparently the plug is the pin. Ewe. Now there's two bolts that hold this bridge guide in place. Now that that's out of the way, This might work, maybe. The whole point of this was to avoid taking the uh, cam gears off, but it doesn't appear that I can avoid that situation, so we're just gonna get them off the old fashioned way. Uh, maybe we can just get by with just one. No, because of the way the guide is in there, I gotta get that one out too. That's violent. This is gonna be fine. Nope, that's not gonna be fine. <laughs> Violent. <laughs> but it's off. And then that can just... Here's another look at what the inside of this head looks like. It's not good. And the, uh, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not supposed to be that color. I am, Honestly surprised that that is in one piece. The design of this cylinder head does lend itself to removing it without pulling the cams or valve train, but that's not what we do on this channel. So next, we're going to get those cams out and crack those cam caps loose. This engine is starting to have uh, a little bit of an aroma and it's, it's not good. So the journal's in the head, not that great. I don't know if that's a piece of metal. It wouldn't surprise me. But all the rockers are in good shape. I don't see any signs of bent valves or any damage like that. Yeah, pretty grooved up. So looking at the camshafts, pretty deep damage to the cam caps. Really bad. Probably some of the worst we've seen in a long time on this channel. Now I sprayed this side off, this side I didn't. So that's just water that was in the crankcase. The only way for water to get in this area is, well, for the oil pump to turn into a water pump. Water does not typically make the best lubricant. It's pretty bad, really deep there. Now we need to take the crank pulley off so that I can take these out, so that I, the guides will loosen up, so that the head will go past them when I remove the head bolts. Nope. Yep. And that should allow these to be loose. Yes, they're loose, but I don't know if they're loose enough for the head to make it by. I'm gonna fish the chain out of here and see if that's what's keeping these guides spread apart. It is not. So what is it? What am I missing? See, I have my doubts that the uh, head will make it past. I really do. So how, how am I supposed to do this? Normally the guides wouldn't be in, in one piece. Okay, that side makes it by. I think I can get this off. We're gonna give it the old college try, e even though I, I dropped out. Next, 
I need to remove some of the uh, perimeter bolts. They're not actually head bolts. We've got one, two, three. Now it's time for the head bolts, and they are E12s, in case anyone's wondering. Spicy. All right, I don't know if this is gonna come right off. There's a dipstick tube that goes into the head. I think I can just, that's what we're gonna try. No, oh, that was really easy. Well, head gasket looks okay on that side. I don't see any problems there. Uh, okay, okay. There's some not so great signs in here. Let's uh, let's do our our very scientific test. That's a must. Okay, so I can move the engine. That's good. This is kind of fun. Oh, there's a, I forgot. There's a, a chain. So, I think you guys can kind of see that this piston is a lot cleaner than the rest of these. But I don't see any signs that anything struck the cylinder head. I don't see any uh, impressions of valves, so that's a good sign. Let's see if we can... Nope, it, it's stuck now. Well, cylinder one definitely has some moisture in it. Outside of that, I don't see anything too terrible. Can't look at these two because, well, I screwed up. I turned the engine over with the chain down there, and now it's in a bind, but we'll fix that later. Cylinder four. I see some vertical wear, but nothing horrendous. But if you look, this cylinder is, uh, it's really, it's kind of clean. But it's not like it was cleaned with, uh, with hot water or hot coolant. It's definitely cleaner than the uh, adjacent cylinders. Well, cylinder four looks normal. Three's a little wet. And whoa. So we got a burned valve or a broken valve, probably burned. And my guess with this is that uh, the cylinder ran pretty lean. And it's usually injector or high pressure fuel pump related. So I won't be selling the high pressure fuel pump from this engine because the last thing I want to do is melt down somebody else's engine. Even if it was injectors, I, I can't verify that. Short of putting that pump on another engine and risk ruining it, yeah, no. Not going to sell that one. So I know it might be hard to tell, but those are uh, date stamps on this timing guide. And if I'm reading it correctly, it looks like it was replaced... 11 of 16 because there's not 16 months in a year so that's going to be the months and that's going to be the year so this has definitely been replaced it's not the original unit if those date stamps are correct now we're going to turn the short block upside down so we can start on the oil pan i think i gotta go this way oh there's definitely still some oh that's not what I want to happen. Does this have a drain in it somewhere? Uh, I don't see, I don't see one. So I got an idea. Let's, let's be smarter than the engine. What if, ah, see, we're covered now. Oh, it's still leaking oil and whatever else that is. Here goes the chain. 
Now let's unbolt this lower steel oil pan. Okay, let's give it a couple taps. All gentle like. Oh boy. Well. Whoa, that smells bad. Yeah, that's a that smells bad. You know, I've seen a lot of different flavors of oil in my life. But this is probably the most caramel-ish flavor that I've ever seen. And then it looks like there's some kind of layer of sludge. Yeah, I'm not touching that. I'm getting smarter here. This is it's a multi-layer cake here. So that's that's gross, but I don't see any large chunks of metal, so I guess that's good. And this just looks like, uh, well, other parents, you guys know, it's a blowout. The pickup, mm, it's clean-ish. It's hard to make out what all of this looks like, so I'm going to give this a quick uh, break clean bath. Oh, I can see again. Next, let's get this cover off of the oil pump. Yee. Get that off so we can drop the chain and we can pull the oil pump out. Oh, yes. What just fell out of here? What was that? Uh, well, somebody didn't do their job, right? Let's clean this off. I'll show you what this is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a broken piece of timing guide. So if we, we don't, we no longer need confirmation that this was replaced because this is a component of the original one of these. And it's definitely been chewed on. So typically... And maybe it's just me, but when one of these comes apart in any engine, the idea is to get all of this stuff out. And I've looked this thing over pretty well. I can't find where that piece might have come from. I don't think this is missing anything. And by the way, in case you guys are wondering, the dipstick runs through the guide. Next, we'll remove the oil pump. Oh, it's still got lots of water in it. I forgot this also doubles as a water pump when the crankcase is full of water. Now let's blast this oil pump apart. Oh, spring loaded. Ew. Ew. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to give this uh, quite a bath here. I'm gonna do that and then show you guys what I find. Oh, that's a big one. So, this actually doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of wear at the edge of these, but it's not really as bad as I'd think. But it was water cooled, so maybe that's why. We don't see a ton of wear on this housing, but there definitely is some wear. If you look way inside of there, you'll definitely see some wear, like some debris has been through here. That one's not too bad. It's really not terrible, but it's certainly not something that even if this were a month, bunch of money, it's just it's just not worth not worth selling. It's not good enough. Now, uh, I guess what you would call the windage tray. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. Stuck on some dowels. Now we'll start removing this bed plate. Oh, 
Oh, this is perplexing. I thought those might be bolts, but they almost look like they're caps that you can just pop out of there. But I, I think they're part of this uh, bed plate, and if I remove them, I might damage it. Maybe the bolts are underneath. I feel like it would leak oil if that were the case. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a, a shot. I'm not gonna try that hard though. No, I'm, I'm not gonna try any harder. I don't want to ruin anything. We're just gonna get these main cap bolts loose and see if it's loose. Well, I looked on the internet and the internet says that I need to remove these because the bolt heads are beneath them. So we're going to uh, use my chisel driver here and see what happens. Here goes something maybe. I think they're moving. No wreckage at all. So that's interesting. I've never seen that before. But hey, now we know. And there we go. But it comes right off now. Oh, that's much easier with the bolts out. Ooh. There's a bearing. There's a bunch of bearings that won't let go. Okay, next. I'm going to crack the rod caps loose. Okay. At this point, I think I can lift the crank out. Ooh. All right, so it looks like we've got nothing in the way and we can push these rods and pistons right out of this thing. I'm gonna do that by rotating the engine on its side. It'll also let me drain the rest of the muck that's in this engine. Oh, I can't go that way because I still have the oil cooler attached. All right, these knock these rods and pistons out of here. First, let's talk about these rod bearings. They're not good. But they're evenly worn. Nothing's much worse than the other. And the main bearings look worse. Look at the uh, damage to that one. Definitely not what you want to see for main bearings. They are really kind of small like compared to the uh compared them to the rod bearings they're pretty much the same size you might say that they are mini bearings so none of the rods look bent so i don't think this was a hydrolock situation obviously it had a, a, a melted valve or a damaged valve i cleaned these up a little bit a little more than average skirt wear this was the piston from the cylinder with the valve damage and i think this was just fuel wash that cleaned this piston. I didn't see any cracked ring lands. Quite a bit of skirt wear. I don't see any, any melty areas. I don't think it, it detonated and melted a piston. I looked these all over pretty well and I didn't really see any major damage, just, just some wear on the skirts. Now we'll gander at the crankshaft. It's pretty good damage on that main journal. That rod journal doesn't look too bad, but this 
this main journal looks bad. It's like pitted. And just so you know, there was water in every part of this. I, I sprayed this down with some brake clean. So I, I do think that the oil pump circulated water in this engine, at least for a short time. I think that's what led to all this uh, lubrication or lack thereof damage. Now we can gander at this block. You can see the entire bore, cylinder one, some rust streaks, but no major damage. But this cylinder, some pretty deep pitting. Really deep there. That's going to need machine work. And I don't know if you can machine these or you have to put new sleeves in. And at that point, I don't know that it would be worth it. This may end up in the uh, scrap pile. Some more rust pitting in cylinder three and some vertical damage on that cylinder there. Some glazing. I wish I knew how many miles were on this engine. What, you guys thought we were done? I still need to see what the other side of that valve looks like. Decided to pull both exhaust valves from this cylinder. And that spring is gone forever. Oh, that one did not want to let go all the way. Let's keep trying. Wait a second here. I took the wrong one apart. Oh yeah, that's bad. So here is the melted valve. Burned pretty bad. Usually they just burn a little corner, but this, this took a good 25-30% uh, off of that valve. And this can happen for a few different reasons. It could be a weak fuel injector or something that's kind of like dribbling fuel out. Could have had a vacuum leak in that cylinder, which could have been an injector seal or maybe an intake manifold. It would only have affected this particular cylinder because I don't see any other valve damage. But either way, that's a zero compression situation. So I don't really see any seat damage, but can't just slap a valve in here and call it good. This head still may be salvageable, but I don't know, after looking at those caps, I'm leaning towards this is not going to be a good cylinder head. I think I have a pretty good idea of what happened to this engine. I think sometime five or six years ago, this suffered a timing guide related failure and someone had it repaired. Now, I don't know how long they drove it with the chain rattle because it does make a bunch of noise, but it's likely that a lot of small plastic pieces got caught in the pickup and it could have starved the engine of oil at that time. And then whoever did that job didn't get all of the pieces out. That was not the best thing to find. At that point, someone put a guide set in it and a chain set in it, which is a load of work. And uh, they resealed the oil pan poorly. So maybe this engine was starved of oil a few times because of oil leaks. I think uh, if water comes out of the oil pan and it was all bolted together, then oil will certainly leak slowly. Water just ran out of it very quickly. And then I think it had some either a vacuum leak on that cylinder, maybe an injector seal, or perhaps an intake manifold related issue, or perhaps a bad injector or low fuel pressure. And that just happened to be the cylinder that had an issue. Couple that with perhaps running 87 octane, and I believe these require premium, and it melted a valve. I don't think the water happened and then it was driving. Maybe the, maybe the engine sat outside before the yard got it back and maybe it sat inside their shop so long that water was circulated throughout that the engine, at least where it could reach. I think that's why we found water everywhere inside of the crankcase. Although it doesn't really explain the water in the head unless maybe that engine sat upside down or on its side. The turbo being locked up, well, I'm gonna take that apart and maybe I'll post an update if I find anything, but perhaps part of that valve might be stuck somewhere in the uh, exhaust housing of that turbo. Either way, the turbo's no good. Even if I pull a piece out of it and it spins freely, after suffering that kind of damage, it's just, it's a core at best. I don't really like these engines, and I think I've made that clear in this video, but that doesn't mean that they're all junk and that they can't last with proper maintenance. 
I just think as, as old as these engines are, finding one that's had great maintenance is going to be a challenge. So if you're out to try to, try to find one of these cars, you really got your heart set on it, don't shy away from it because of this video. Just make sure you buy a good one of these cars with good service history. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to buy any parts out of this engine or anything else I've torn down or off of one of my 11 Miatas that I have in stock, I'm gonna leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com. I've been uploading our fresh inventory just about every single week. I really appreciate you watching these videos. They are a lot of fun to make and I, I can't say thank you enough for the, the watch time and all the comments. I've learned so much from all the comments. I'm just, I don't want you guys to think I'm ungrateful. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.